name's Kerry, and uh, I'll be your tour guide, and we're going to walk you back through some history, okay? This is um, the year 1780, all right? The Continentals have been fighting the Red Coats for four years now, because you remember in 1776, we signed that, uh, what was it in Philadelphia? Somebody remember? This piece of paper. Thank you, thank you. Declaration of Independence. Give him a sucker. Please, um, all right. Guys, first off, though, let me go over some ground rules, okay? Now, for those of you who've never been around a lot of living history events, it's going to sound weird. For those of you who have been, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, as we go through here, don't argue with the reenactors, okay? If they say the wrong thing or they don't have their jacket on just right or the general looks more like a major. Uh, anything you want to take up, you know, please do with uh, at the end of the tour with the manager, Marina, she's around here. Um, but uh, it's okay to talk with the reenactors if one speaks to you, but, but don't, uh, don't linger. And uh, simply because we have to move through and keep it going, we'll have several scenes and some of them are in more than one scene, all right? Now we have a big group and we have two scenes in cabins, small cabins, all right? So what I'm going to do is, uh, first one is just right here. I'm going to let about half of you in, all right? And you'll go, they'll go through the scenario. And then you're going to go out. I'll, I'll be there and then walk you out back. And then we'll wait while the next group comes in and, and sees the same thing. We, we, uh, we just have too many people to get in there at one time, okay? If it's still too crowded for anyone, simply step outside. I'll tell you what's going on, all right? Now, um... That's about it. Just let me guide you and, uh, and tell you what's happening as we walk, and I'll fill in some gaps. But right now, getting back to 1780, all right, we've been fighting the British for four years, all right, and it's not going good at all. The war up north has, is it a stalemate. We have John, Wa uh, John Washington, you know, George's brother. George Washington is uh, sitting there in Morristown, New Jersey, um, pretty much bored, you know, Springsteen hadn't been born yet, so he has nothing to listen to except for fife music. Uh, he's looking over at New York, which back then the air was a lot clearer and you could see further from Morristown, New Jersey. And he can see the British or where the British are. But what he doesn't know is that a, a fleet has sailed from New York Harbor with British soldiers. They're, gonna, they're heading to Charlestown, South Carolina. Now, the uh, commander of the British forces in North America, um, Henry Clinton, Clinton, is going to attack Charleston. He wants to just level Charlestown, all right? Which is controlled by um, Major Benjamin Lincoln. None of these names are kin to the, uh, the, the, the later presidents, but I thought it was kind of interesting how we had two. Two, two people, two commanders fighting each other with future president names. All right. And they do. They do defeat Charlestown and the British surrender. All right. And um, things kind of go downhill from there for a while. There's a battle. A late, that was in May, early May. Then in, then in late May, I think it's the 29th, uh, they fight the British again under, uh, well, the Colonials fight the British under Major Patrick Ferguson. <laughs> Ferguson has a, a unit of uh, colonists who are loyal to the Crown, Tories. And um, after the battle, some of the colonists try to surrender, and Major Ferguson orders them killed. So they shoot down these guys who are surrendering, which at that point it's actually murder, all right? It, once a soldier surrenders, you're not supposed to shoot them, and, but they did, all right? So that creates a lot of bad blood, as you could imagine. And then Cornwallis, later in August, a few months later, he defeats uh, colonial forces at Camden. And things are just not looking good. So um, the, the colonists are afraid that Cornwallis is going to attack up into North Carolina. They've heard rumors that Ferguson is already in North Carolina, but back then communication was very poor at best, right? So. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to Gilbert Town, where, where uh, Ferguson has his headquarters. It's right here, and we're going to see what's going on. All right, so let's see. Everyone here is going in. 
I'm going to let us say uh, somewhere around 10, you know, if you're with a family group, I don't want to break that up. But let's start out with, uh, let's say 12 in the cabin, and, and then the rest of us will hang outside. So I'll... I'll I got a copy of this dec uh, Declaration of Independence uh, Declaration. They call the king a tyrant. They're asking for it, then. Oh, okay, lovely. That's a Mr. Mayor's on here. Can we get to hang? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did just want to see if anybody else wanted to go. Um, y'all, it looks good to y'all. Go ahead, Sean. I believe I don't feel pretty good. Thank you, sir. That's, uh, that's, uh, let me get a few, these two guys, y'all want to come on. All right, then the rest of y'all go in here in just a second, all right? Sam Phillips, as you requested, Major. Ah, good. Send our guest down here. Guards, make sure he stays seated. Last time, he threw a lit candle at my head, and I still had the love to show it. Now, Mr. Phillips, tell us where Samir, Shelby, and McDowell were coming from. I'm not telling you lobster backs of dancing. If you know what's good for you, then you tell us all you know, boy. Well, I know. I saw you and your Tory dogs fleeing like cowards from Musgrove's Mill a few weeks back. You will watch your tone, or else. Calm yourself, Captain the Paister. Well, gentlemen, we'll treat our guests with respect. But you will tell me where Shelby is coming from. You and your Tory dog will see Colonel Shelby's and his Overmountain men soon enough. Oh, I'm counting on it. I have some unsettled business with the Colonel that will see all of you and your rebel ilk hanging from the strongest tree branches in North Carolina. Take this rebel scum out of here. But first, I have a message for you to give Colonel Shelby. Tell him that if he does not desist from his opposition of the British arms, I'll march my army over the mountains, hang your leaders, and lay waste your country with fire and sword. Drag him out. Huh. That should get Colonel Shelby's attention. A strong message indeed, sir. And so we'll see Shelby and all his men completely obliterated. <laughs> all right, folks, you've got all my... Just leave a little room for poor wounded Sam to come through, all right? <laughs> got a bad day. We don't want to make it worse. <laughs> Right back here. Feel free to wrap around. Where are you coming? Well, just uh, right here. Nope. What are you doing here? What in the world happened to you? I got captured at the Musgrove's Mill. Ferguson had me tortured to see if I'd tell him where you were hiding. Red headed, limey blackguard! Uh, come here, Sam. Come in, Rex. Surrender, he will march his armies over the mountain, kill our leaders, and lay waste to our country with fire and sword. How did he? Looks like Ferguson's looking for a fight. By God, he will get one. What are your orders, Colonel? Gather as many men as you can. Have them meet me in Sycamore Shoals. Where is she, Mommy? Make sure they bring a full shot pouch and at least a week's worth of rations. Yes, sir. Somebody bring me a horse! I've got to meet with Colonel Severe. He's not going to like me interrupting his horse race. This is too urgent. Sam, when you can ride, I want you to go to Surrey and Wilkes. Warn Major Winston, Colonel Cleveland, tell them what's happening. Then head to Grandfather Mountain. At that point, I want every village in the Nola Chucky and the Yes to know Ferguson wants us to fight, and we're going to give it to him. Then we'll teach him a thing or two about fire. All right, let's follow these mountain men here over to this other cabin. All right? See, Heather, you must 
whole ration bag a week's worth of food. We're gathering for a fight. Well, who are we fighting? We're traveling Ferguson. <laughs> All right, I got a ball just for Ferguson. Right. Give me a few minutes to gather my gear, say goodbye to my family. Where are we mustering? Sycamore Shoals. I'm going to make sure to give him a nice North Carolina welcome. <laughs> I'll be right along. Darling, British are starting to invade and we got to send them back home. I'll be home soon. I'm home in one piece. Ah, you know I will. Home fires burning, honey. <laughs> and that's the way it went down, guys. Um, they started rounding up these people who lived back in this area over the mountain men. And uh, they had you know plenty of people volunteering. The problem was they had to find Ferguson. Alright? So let's <laughs> Our forces should arrive at Quaker Meadows by nightfall. Shelby, Severa, and Campbell are in camp waiting for us there. Well, with our nearly 500 men, 500 men and their 600 men, we certainly would have Ferguson on the run and maybe even Cornwallis. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here because we have to find Ferguson and his loyalists first. Well, this is very true, and it could be that Ferguson is already holed up at 96 within their fortifications. Well, we'll have to track Ferguson down before he leaves North Carolina then. Then let's go. Let's go. That's your cue. We've had no luck whatsoever in finding Parkus in Oregon. Patience, man. We will find him. Colonel Shelby, Colonel Severe, I think I have an idea of how we can find Parkus. What's your idea, you know? Well, there's a cabin not too far from here, owned by two Tory ladies, and uh, I fancy myself quite the actor. Out with it, Enoch. Well, let me go to their house, posing as a Tory, and I can find old Ferguson for you. Uh, that plan is dangerous and stupid. It might work. Boy's got a good idea. It could very well work. Go talk to those two poor ladies. Find out where Ferguson's at. Give us a signal. All right. See, folks, they're looking for Ferguson. Well, good day to you, ladies. Would you happen to know where I could find Major Ferguson? Well, what on God's green earth is a young man like you want with Ferguson? Well, you see, rebels burned down my family's farm. I'm looking for Ferguson so I can join up and fight back. And uh, judging by the flag you ladies have there, I, I assume you must know where he's camped. I think we should help the young lad. I think you're right. We'll find Ferguson and his army not too far from here at King's Mount. And uh, he gave us this flag uh, for helping give him some decisions. Well, thank you so much, and God save the king. What we got here, John? Looks like we found us a Tory spy. Indeed it does. Ladies. Dare Harmon stare on his head. Ladies, you should probably go inside. Women shouldn't see stuff like this. Don't hurt him, he's just a child. Well, don't worry, dear. We won't hurt him for very long. It'll be a nice, stiff, short drop for him. The tree over there worked just fine. Mm. Going inside. Stay away from the windows. Get on. There's a moral here. You can let the women in the bar alone. I've been all right. No, it's not. Major Ferguson. Uh, you have a word? Why have we chosen to encamp here? Four places so indefensible. We're not going to talk to this family for you. We can set up our encampment. We can even see it. We can just see every side of the mountain. We can easily defend it. Plus, there's a road right there. We can just strike to Charlotte for the Lord Cornwallis is. Well, then why don't we continue down the road to Charlotte and to the protection of Lord Cornwallis and the main army? But he, well, these dregs of humanity, as you call them, can come up here and attack us any day now. Because, Captain, I will not run into the arms of Cornwallis with my tail between my legs. 
I am the king of this mountain, and neither the king nor the God Almighty himself will remove me from this mountain top. Make sure the lines are battle ready. Yes, sir. Cells. Prisoners, line up! Take your hats off! from Ferguson's tent is such a treat after a battle like that. Mm. <laughs> I agree. Dispatches are being sent to General Davidson, General Gates, General George Washington to tell of our great deeds here this day. I wish I could see Cornwallis's face when he hears the news. <laughs> He'll probably send Tarleton after us now. Mm. <laughs> Let him we'll bury him next to Ferguson. I... Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves, gentlemen. We've won a great victory, but the war is far from over. I agree with Major Winston. There's much to do, be done before we do any more fighting. What, what do we do with all the prisoners? Hang them. Hang them all! As enticing as that sounds, Cleveland, no. We need to show them that we are better than they are. I agree. 
I agree. Perhaps we should march them to Salisbury, Salem, major encampments, and maybe, maybe get some restitution for the ones who have already been killed in such brutal manner. Right. Absolutely. Fine. We can trade them for the men of, that they have of ours and keep them from hanging like they've already hung nine of them. That's true. Let's settle then. I agree. Agreed. Agreed. Rumor has it that Gates is going to be replaced as commanding general. Oh. All right. Well, here's to our victory. Here's to our new commander that will lead us to a final victory in Carolina. Huzzah! Y'all can cheer too. Huzzah! There you go. <laughs> to your right, help. It's the. Uh... I have a message for General Cornwallis. I was trying to you, my lord. Be one of the first provincial what? liners. It's so important that it interrupts my war council. Major Ferguson is begging for help with you. If you cannot deal with colonial gravel, fat country farmers with pitchforks, then how is he going to deal with the colonial regulars or the French when they arrive? Something wrong, my lord. It seems that Major Ferguson has been killed in battle at King's Mountain. Killed by the very gravel he vowed to destroy. Send a message to Colonel Tarleton. Tell him to rendezvous with us at Winsboro. My, sir, my lord, are we not are we abandoning North Carolina? We have no choice. This dispatch says there's over a thousand Scots Irish settlers. I will not risk our men. Order the retreat. Off with you! Ferguson, damn fool! Doomed us all! Correct. <laughs> Ferguson was a commoner, though. His dad had been some type of merchant, and he bought his son a commission into the into the British Army, and uh, he was also Scottish. And uh, what happened, though, is, you know, him not being of aristocracy, you know, maybe he wasn't given right, the, you know, the respect he was due. Anyway, this call at Kings Mountain was bad. He had had several victories. He was very cocky. He, uh, and for good reason. He was a good commander. Okay, if he had came from maybe a higher class of uh, parents, he might have you know, wound up higher than he was and not, not made that mistake in the King's Mountain. But what what he did by issuing that proclamation is the over the mountain men don't come and fight for us, we're gonna burn them down, hang the leaders, all these bad things, right? Now, he could have not even been serious. That was a, a trick that some of these commanders used in order to incite, you know, help from the, from the populace. We better go help him or he's gonna hurt us, you know? And that was often the thing. Maybe the people, the Tories who were fighting, they maybe they didn't want the British to win, but they didn't have a choice, okay? So that's what he was shooting for with these guys. You can understand, these guys up here, living the over the mountain men, they weren't even supposed to be here. After 1763, there was nobody even supposed to be up here except Native Americans. All right, the Crown didn't want you up here. They couldn't tax you. They couldn't keep you under control. You could come up here and get a few furs and come back down and sell them. They were okay with that. But they didn't want you living here. Well, these guys lived here under no government, the true anarchy. The rules were made by them, enforced by them, and they were living okay, even with the Native Americans. But when uh, Ferguson issued that proclamation, they were like, nope, because they'd heard what the British had been doing. They'd heard about the battles. They'd heard about the way civilians were treated, and they went after him. So the question is, were they patriots? Or not, and that's just, that's that's there is you know no right answer there. That's up to you, but they were not exactly they didn't exactly rise to the calls to fight until they were threatened. All right, but when they were threatened, these men who had lived up here and learned how to live from Native Americans, how to fight, how to sneak through the woods, um, they were uh, well the British, the Tories, the townspeople, the farmers, they were no match for these guys. All right, now that. Well, it was just one victory, but it swung the tide of the war. There was some more fighting, but it was more or less a draw and just a bunch of people get killed, you know, 
like war tends to be sometimes, and eventually culminates at Yorktown, Virginia with the surrender of the British. Now, Cornwallis wouldn't even come surrender himself. He sent his aid. But uh, pretty much the, the tide swung at this battle, and it's because of the over the mountain men who lived up here in basically a governmentless state. Okay? Uh, that's all for today. Um, if you would, go back out through this Fraser cabin here. And uh, I hope you guys will come back to visit us more here at Hickory Ridge. They're open through the week up into November sometime. And then hopefully next summer we'll have the uh, Horn in the West playback. I don't know if anybody ever been to that. Horn in the West. It's really worth seeing. It runs for about, I want to say 10 weeks, 50 days, something like that, in the summer. Um, starting in June and in early August. And uh, usually it casts about 100 people. So it's, uh, it's, it's been going on since the 50s. And you know, starting somewhere else, then coming here. First time I was here was in 1969 with my grandparents. I, I barely remember it. <laughs> but anyway, um, I just started doing the math on that. Never mind. I got sidetracked. All right, folks, y'all have a great day, all right? And uh, please, please come back. Thank you.